Thanks, Josh. We're using the interpreter system today, so if you do want to ask a question, just ask you to take the microphone from uh, 2023 guys. Um, Eddie and Dave available for the first question we've been on. Nope, thanks. Hi Eddie, um, can you maybe just give us an update on, I guess, how the week's gone? Um, yeah, so far in terms of preparation for Portugal. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, obviously a tough old week. Um, so we trained the day after the game um, because we wanted to get back out on the field um, with the young players who thought want to get their th thoughts in their head about how we want to play against Portugal. So we changed the training week around, trained on the Monday, had Tuesday as a recovery day, then had two really good sessions Wednesday, Thursday. Um, yeah, we've got a clear plan of how we'd like to play against Portugal and the players have responded really well. You know, as I've said previously, they're a really good bunch of, of young players and, and their application to, to want to be better has been fantastic. Uh, yeah, just opportunity for, for you know, for Keddie's train well the whole tournament. Uh, Samu's probably just been a little bit off, you know. He's had a tough run into the World Cup, you know, coming back from ACL, two hamstring injuries. Uh, just hasn't been as sharp as we'd like him to be. And Jordi Bataille had a bit of a calf, calf issue. He's fit now, but uh, again with, with Izzy, He's trained really well the whole World Cup and feel like you know, both of those two guys can do a really good job for us against... against uh... Right, against uh, Portugal. Uh, look, all we can do is try to get better every day, mate. That's the only thing we can do. You know, we've got a young squad here. I purposely picked a young squad. Um, and I think they're the best players in Australia. And, and we're, all we can do is try to get better every day. There's no lack of desire, no lack of work ethic, no lack of spirit within the team. They're a great bunch of boys. And, you know, we're just not good enough at the moment. But if we keep working the way we will, we will be. Uh, no, well, I've, I've already mentioned the in intervention of the TMO previously. Yeah, I think it's really affecting the flow of the game. And uh, it's making rugby much more stop-start, which makes it a much more powerful game. And I don't know whether we want to keep going down that track and making it more powerful. Uh, Eddie, where, where does this Oh, well, it's not really about me, mate. It's about the team, you know. My, my only job is to get the team prepared as well as I can, so the only thing I've been thinking about is the team. And just in terms of the clarity over your future, are you able to give us any update around that, how you're feeling, understanding your wars here? Yeah, well, the only thing I'm concentrating on is the Portugal game, mate. So if you want to ask about anything else, don't ask. I think the Australian public deserve a yes or no answer, Eddie, to the question of did you interview with Japan? On so I've just said to, I've just said to you, mate, and I've already answered that before. You haven't given a yes or no answer. I've already said that before. How hard is it to give a yes or no answer? I said no, mate. Said no, mate. I said no previously. When people like Simon Boydman say that if that's true, your position is untenable, how does that not make you feel? I'm just worried about the Portuguese game. Have you considered resigning after this weekend? I'm only worried about the Portuguese game. Um, Eddie, after the game the other night, you said that there isn't just issues with the, the Wallabies, but there are deeper issues within Australian rugby. Could you expand on what they are and what needs to be done to, you know, from ground up to, to solve? 
Yeah, well, uh, yeah, there are, um, but again, my focus is on the Portuguese game, and I think those sort of issues should be dealt with by the by Rugby Australia. We're we're obviously talking about it all the time, and you know, when I first came in the job, we were talking about it, and we're still talking about it now. Um, but it's not for me to talk about those issues, and I don't I don't want anyone to think that we're making excuses for the performance of the team. Yeah, as I said, I take full responsibility for the performance of the team and I stand by that. Do you think you got the selection right for the Youth World Cup squad? Yeah, 100%. 100%. And why, do you, why do you feel that way? Because I, I feel this is the best group of players to represent Australia at this World Cup. And the results haven't been great, guys. I understand that, but they're a good young bunch of players and I think we've got the best players in each position here. And, and did it absolutely have to be at the World Cup campaign where you ushered through this change? Did it absolutely have to be at this World Cup where you ushered through that, that generational change? Well, it was the only opportunity I had, mate. Um, yesterday when um, Pierre was uh, in, he was talking about what he thought was the inability of the Wallabies players to cope with pressure moments. Um, just wondered whether or not you think that's been a problem, um, whether they failed to deal with pressure. And the other thing he said was um, he doesn't reckon Super Rugby is um, preparing people for these pressure moments as much as say uh, European footy does. Do you have any thoughts on whether um, Super Rugby is the right sort of preparatory place for us? Again, they're, they're all key issues and, and certainly there's some truth in those things that Pierre said, but again, I'm only focusing on the Portuguese game. You know, I can't change Super Rugby, I can't change the amount of how high pressure games our players play in. So again, we defer to other, other issues that are, are definitely there, but the only thing we can control is what we do here. And again, I, you know, as I've said, I take full responsibility for our performances. So I don't want to defer to other issues. You know, that would be, I think, uh, not the right way to go. Um, just went on the back row, so you flip back to the way the back row was against Fiji. Just, I think you said last week that this is one of some more size. What's the thinking with um, going back to the original 76 combo? Uh, well, this against Portuguese, Portugal, it's going to be a work rate game. You know, they they play a side-to-side -side game and feel that having two workers there will suit us best. And then and then uh, Leota can come on in the second half and. Yeah, I thought he played well last week for us. Um, and it's also a bit of, of keeping the players fresh. You know, we've got, a, again, a young team that needs to be kept fresh. So, you know, the fall tournament, you know, had the Australia 18 play Portugal. Um, Brett, I just wondered how that helped sort of Bird's coaching staff's knowledge about what to expect with Portugal in terms of their shapes and how they're going to approach this game. Uh, well, it was just another opportunity to watch them live. and. You know, what, what you're trying to do when you go and watch them live is just to pick out the intent of how they're trying to play. It's not so much the shapes, but the intent of how they're trying to play, how they're trying to uh, get into the game themselves. Um, so that was pretty useful, mate. Um, Eddie, not just the talk, but how the players, how training was great last week before, before the game and, and the week before, really. And did you change the, the structure? Have you changed anything else this week to sort of get a different result? Oh, well, changing, looking at changing everything, mate. Uh, trying to find out what's, what works and does, doesn't work. Um, but when I say that, we're, we're consistent in our training. You know, we're, I think we've, we've trained really well, but we're not getting the results. And sometimes the scoreboard's the last thing to change. You know, and that's hard to take, and, and I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes that's just the case. Um, and you know when you say you take full responsibility, um, what, what does that mean in practice? Well, if people have got a problem with the results, they come to me, right? And at the end of the tournament, I'll stand and stand by that. And if, if there needs to be a fall guy for the, for the World Cup, then, then it's obviously me. Like, that's... When you become a head coach of a team, you take on that responsibility. So I've got, yeah, you know, 
the playing group, I think it's been absolutely fantastic. I couldn't ask any more for them. Couldn't ask any more for them. So therefore, if there needs to be someone responsible for the performance, it's me. I think that's pretty self-explanatory in a way. There's one just behind you, Luke. Uh, and you've seen a lot of other significant you know, phases when it's called grouping out, there's been a lot more changes than, than you have. And my thinking is essentially the strongest team is this to, to try and build confidence? Or was your thinking behind that strong side? Uh, well, I didn't hear the first part of the question, mate. A lot, a lot of other teams have changed quite practically the whole team. Uh, well, I've always gone into every World Cup and you pick the best 23 for each game, and this is the best 23. Eddie, can you promise Australian rugby fans that you will see these tough times out and that you will be with the team moving forward and you won't help the Australian rugby team prosper? Well, I've, I think I've said that before, mate. I know you're going down that track, mate. I'm concentrating on the Portugal game. I'm 100% committed to the job. And I've said that previously. And I know you want to keep asking, and you can keep asking. I appreciate your interest. And you, you did also highlight for this World Cup that you were planning for 27. I know you focused on Portugal, but how much desire do you have to be there for 27, hopefully with a rebuilt, strong Milwaukee side at a home World Cup? Well, you know, that's definitely an option. But again, the only thing I'm worried about now is a Portuguese game. For me to make statements about the future is, is irrelevant. Uh, well, you're always looking to see what you're doing, mate, um, whether you're doing it the right way or not. Um, so continually doing that. Uh, well, for, from my perspective, for the young players, it's a great learning opportunity, fantastic learning opportunity. And every, every team I've seen develop has a, has a game like that, that that is etched in their memory, but actually acts as a spur to work a little bit harder and to understand what it takes to win at this level. Uh, Dave, you've been sitting there patiently and you've been sitting there patiently for a couple of weeks with the coach to take all bars and questions. How are you feeling? You know, those times when you're at National Council, there should be a moment of celebration. How have you felt throughout these past couple of weeks? Uh, specifically? Just in regards to the coaches coming under a pretty good department. As a, as a leader, as a coach, <coughs> Well, it's only natural when we haven't gotten results, isn't it? So, um, as Eddie's touched on, for us as a group, it was a tough couple of tough 24 hours after the game, and now we focus on what we can control, which is our performance against Portugal, which is um, finishing in the jersey the way we should be, um, and doing our country proud with a win. That's all we can control, and that's all we're focusing on. And has it been particularly tough? Uh, as I said, sort of the first 24 hours was tough and um, yeah, I'm proud of the group and how we've responded this week in terms of our training week. Um, and again, we're focusing on what we can do this weekend, which is putting out a performance that we're proud of as a group and finishing on a high. Uh, Eddie, I remember that you used to say that your mum used to call you or whatever after matches. And, um, like in terms of personal toll, do you take a moment and think, why, am I, why do I do this to myself? Like, why am I putting myself in this position? Obviously, you've been a coach for so long. Like, you, you probably don't need the money. But do you think, what's your motivation? I, think, oh, I love coaching. And I love, I love the challenge. And that's the reason I came back to Australia, because I wanted to make a difference. And I apologise, I haven't made a difference. But I want to make a difference. You know, I, I was disappointed how the Wallabies were going and I wanted to, to come back and make a, make a change. And 
and you know, I think I've started that process. Uh, where it goes, I don't know, because I'm not in control of that. But I've started that process, and I think we've got a great bunch of young players here who are ready to take it on, and that'll start on Sunday. Is your mum still alive? Uh, she's still alive. She doesn't text me anymore. I think she's, she says, just win. Everything fixes winning, and it does. Everything, winning fixes everything. So we're just focused on winning this weekend. Okay, David, it's been a tough start, obviously, but how have you found captaincy um, on field in games particularly? Like, how does that change your role and what you're doing? Is there an extra load, and how does that extra load kind of fit in? Oh, it helps when you've got experience around you. You know, I've got um, quality leadership group on the field as well. You know, on the field I had Slips next to me, um, Whitey off the pine, Tate, um, Samu in the back, so that always helps. Um, that eases the load for me. It's just about going out of there and performing. Um, that, that's all I can control as well. Just um, specifically, I guess, and it's a, it's just a moment. It's not. It didn't change game completely, but the decision to take a line out rather than a kick for goal. Can you maybe talk through how, when you're in the field in that moment, that gets decided? Like, is that your decision? Is it kind of? A committee comes together and then you make a decision or how did that kind of go down? Yeah, ultimately, ultimately it's my decision. Um, we came together as a group and we felt like um, at that point in time that's what we wanted to go for. Um, didn't pan out, but yeah, we, we came together and we followed the process of what we've been doing all throughout these months together. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a really good question, but at this stage, particularly with the, you know, we've got a, we've got a, you take James Slipper out of our squad and we've got an average test cap at 20, 20, you know, it's a very young team. So I want to protect them at this stage. You know, if you, your child's three or four, you want to protect them when they get to eight or nine, 10 or 12, there's a different way of parenting. Um, and I feel this is the best way at the moment. Good question. What has been your message specifically this week to the young players? Um, again, mate, I don't mean to echo this point, but control what we can control, which is our performance this weekend. Um, you know, we, we, we've done what we need to do over the first day in reviewing the game, because that's important. You can't just sweep that under the rug. Um, and we've done that. We've come out the other side. We've had a good training week again, and now we just focus on what we can control, which is our performance. That's the best thing we can do as a young group. Turn around with action and go out there and put a performance that we're proud of. Yep. Dave, uh, Dave, how closely will you be watching <coughs> Fiji, Georgia tomorrow? Is, it, is there a plan as a group to get together and, and watch that game, or is it just personal choice? I think everyone's pretty um, been pretty into this World Cup in terms of watching the games. You know, the games are always shown in our team room. So, um, yeah, I, I think we'll get together as a squad and we'll watch it. Eddie, there's been a couple of reports to, uh, linking Angus Crichton uh, with a move from rugby back home at, at the moment. Um, just wanted to know your level of involvement with that and, and what he might offer Australian rugby. Is he available for Portugal? He's not, but don't the Australian people deserve a bit of a plan for the future? Uh, I'm obviously here and I've obviously been in other places that people are suggesting I've been. I wasn't involved in Angus Crichton at all. And, and I've really, I, I've got enough to worry about here, as you can see.
but unfortunately we are playing against Portugal and here there is a lot of support from Portugal. Um, so the stadium maybe will be for Portugal. And do you think the pressure will, will be uh, strong against your team and uh, how the player will, will react to this? Yeah, well, this is the great thing about the World Cup and particularly when you play in the Northern Hemisphere. You know, when you come from the Southern Hemisphere, you know the crowds are going to be quite intense and it's a di different atmosphere. And this is all a process of, 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 of bringing a team up. Um, yeah, and this is a wonderful opportunity on Sunday to be exposed again. Small stadium, 45,000 people, probably a high percentage of Portuguese fans. And we've got to be able to cope with that pressure. And we've got to be able to learn to cope with that pressure. And another opportunity to learn on Sunday. Anything further, Freddie or Dave? Uh, Dave, just on that point of pressure and what Pierre was saying said today as well, do you feel like there's been a failure to deal with pressure at big moments and um, do you think that that is in some way tied to the club football you play and the lack of games and the opposition? The lack of games? Yeah, that you're playing compared to European players and the, and the <coughs> quality of opposition you're playing in club football. Oh, mate, the body hasn't felt like we've had a lack of games this season. Um, we get put under just as much pressure in Super Rugby. Um, is there a failure to deal with it? It's hard to say. I think in, in, in sport, in rugby games, there's moments that you, you can win and you can lose. And obviously in big moments, there are a couple that we haven't sort of fronted up and been able to deal with. Does that mean we've got an issue with being able to deal with it I wouldn't say so um, you know we get put under pressure in training and we work our way through it and we find solutions um, yeah mate I, I don't really have an answer I don't think we do so Any further? Sorry, that one. Uh, well both have trained really well during the World Cup um, Sammy's just been a little bit off his best. Um, uh, Jordan had a, a slight calf injury, which is okay now, but couldn't train. So we just decided to give those two guys the opportunity and think they'll play well against a, a Portuguese team. Thank you. Thanks, guys.